Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let's take a look at some of the new features coming in macOS Sequoia. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 2,000 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There, you could read more about it. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So this week, Apple announced the next version of macOS, Sequoia. They released the developer beta, and in July, we'll have a public beta, and then we'll get the final version released to everybody this fall. Now, a lot of the new features revolve around AI, and those aren't wired in yet in the first developer beta, but there's still a lot of cool new stuff to take a look at. So first, let's take a look at window tiling. This allows you to snap the windows on your Mac's desktop to the sides or top or bottom, fill the screen, or even to quarters. So it's basic Windows management. It's not going to replace some of the third-party apps that have all this advanced functionality. But for most users, it will get the job done. There are a few ways that you can use it. One is that you could simply drag the window over to, say, a side. And you can see when I do so, it shows me this area where it would snap into that space. And if I were to drag it to the right, you could see it would do it there. If I drag it up just into the middle, you can see how it wants to fill the whole space. Now you can also drag all the way to a corner and it will want to fill a quarter of the space like that. Now you can also drag the window around and hold down the Option key and then you'll get these little spaces that you could drop into. And there's some settings for this in System Settings. If you go to Desktop and Dock and scroll down, there's a new section under Windows where it's got Tile by dragging windows to screen edges. Hold the Option key while dragging. And you can also have margins. And this is on by default. You could see it there with it on and with it off. But you also have the ability to move your pointer over the green button there and you could see the different options right here. So I can move this say to the top half of the screen like that. In the window menu you also get an entire subsection here for move and resize. So you can go left, right, top, bottom with keyboard shortcuts and you can do quarters as well and a range. So the way a range works is if you have multiple windows like I have here you can go to the move and resize submenu here and say I want to arrange that into quarters and it will put them all like that. I may do a more detailed video on just window tiling soon. There are a bunch of new things in Notes. One feature I know a lot of people are going to like is highlighting. So you can select some text and to highlight it you can go to Format and then Font and then there's Highlight. But you can see the keyboard shortcut Shift-Command-E is probably what you would use. So Shift-Command-E will highlight the text like that. So you can easily highlight text. You've got a choice of five colors so I can highlight some text but I can also click here. There's a highlight button I can use but I can also click here and change the highlight color as well. There's also the ability to collapse sections. So if you have something that's formatted as a heading here then everything under it can be collapsed like this. You may notice the button here at the top for audio recordings. And you can click here and you get this little audio recording interface. It looks just like the Voice Memos app. And you can record something. This is a test. And then you can see it's embedded inside of the note. Now you also get a transcript. You can see the transcript here. Matter of fact, if you double click it, it goes back to the sidebar here and you could play it back and also look at the transcript and you can even copy and paste out of the transcript. You could also do math notes, which is something I was talking about for the calculator app on the iPad, but it's here in the notes app on the Mac as well. So for instance, I could do, you know, 5 plus 9 equals and you can see it gives me an answer there. I could just press return and it shows it. There's some settings for this under format. You've got math results and you can have the results always inserted just suggested. So if you always want this to happen it will do that. And you can do complex things. So I can do A equals a number, B equals another number and I can do A plus B equals and it gives me the answer. And then I can go up here and change this value and it changes the result. Now the calculator app is also new. Now when you look at it, it looks very similar at first to the old one, but it's a universal app now between the iPhone, iPad, and Mac. And like before, you can switch to the different modes, but you have this button here that will do it for you too. So I can switch to say the scientific calculator like that. Now a big new feature here is the ability to use parentheses. So I could do something like 5 plus and then I could use the left paren like that and then type something else and then write paren and multiply like that and get the answer. There's also 
a conversion mode that you could switch on. Switch on convert. And now you have two slots here at the top and bottom and you can convert from one thing to another. So you have all sorts of different things that you can convert to and from. Now, of course, if Notes has transcriptions for audio recordings, you would imagine that Voice Memos does too, and it does. This is a test. So when I'm done with a voice recording, you can see it's got this little icon here representing a transcription. Getting to it, you would just click here, and you could see the transcription, and you could jump to the portion for that word, and you can copy and all of that. A new app for macOS Sequoia is the Passwords app. It's not really new functionality though. The Passwords app just breaks out that section of system settings into its own app so it feels like a regular password manager. Now, you can go to this Passwords app, access all the same stuff that you could before in system settings, but now it kind of looks a little bit more like notes and reminders with this sidebar here. But actually accessing the information and storing the information, it's just a lot nicer to have it in its own app like this. And there's also going to be a Windows version which is great meaning that you can go with Apple's password manager even if you sometimes need to log into a website on Windows or some other device. The Messages app has some new things and the biggest one, the one that's going to get the most attention is you can now send later. So you can set it up like that. You can schedule a time and date to send the message. You also have text styling. So if I have some text selected like this, notice Command B makes it bold and you can actually control click on it and see other styles here at the top. You also can apply text effects. So you can use an effect like say shake and you can see how it applies an effect there. The other person if they're using iMessage will be able to see that effect as well. So you can have certain words emphasized in different ways in your message. And tap back just got a lot more powerful. Before I could control click on this and I could choose a general tap back thing like a heart or a thumbs up. But now I could actually click right here and choose any emoji I want and have that for tap back. Now whenever you're using your webcam, whether it's with Zoom or FaceTime or something else, you have controls here in the menu bar where you can turn things on like portrait mode, studio light, and all of that depending upon your webcam. You can do this with Apple's webcams for instance. Now you've also got this background setting here. So I can have the background removed and replaced with something else. And I can choose a solid color like this. I could choose an image like this. And I can even choose one of my own photos or just add one here. So I could have anything as my background. So the Calendar app and Reminders app are now linked at least a little bit. So now when you go to add an event, in the calendar. You can do it just as before but you can also add a reminder like this. So this is a full form for adding a reminder in the Reminders app and you could do it here in the calendar so you don't have to switch apps. In addition, you'll see any reminders that you have set with a time and date in the calendar. So let's go to the Reminders app here. I'm going to add a new reminder like that. So you can see this has a time and date set. So now when I look at the calendar, that reminder is actually in my calendar as well as in the Reminders app. So you can just look at your calendar to see what reminders are due today. You can see here there's actually a switch to turn it on and off. Now Safari's got a bunch of new improvements but a lot of those require AI so they're not really there yet. Like for instance, you can see the beginnings of highlights which should give you say a summary and a table of contents for this article here but it doesn't quite come up. It just gives the title right now and the show reader button. But what is already in place is this new ability that when you're looking at a web page that's a video, not really an article, in addition to seeing show reader, you're also going to see this video viewer option here. It's also under view, under inter video viewer. This will only be active if it's mainly a video page like this one. And you could see the keyboard shortcut Shift Command R changes to this. So you could use the same keyboard shortcut to basically just go to Reader View for an article or just go to Video Viewer if it's a video. And then you get something that looks like this that focuses on just the video and cuts the rest of the page out. Freeform has a new feature called Scenes. This is basically like bookmarks for a Freeform board. So the idea is that suppose that you want to show somebody some information but you really want to start off showing them this and you don't want to have to go and zoom in on that particular area. You could go down to the bottom here and add a scene and this sets this up as a scene in the list here. 
And then I could go somewhere else and maybe zoom out a bit and set this up as another scene. And now I can use these scenes here to jump really easily between sections. So you could basically use Freeform as a presentation tool now. There are even some keyboard shortcuts here to move between scenes. And another new feature Freeform has is Snap to Grid. So before you had a grid, but now you actually can have it snap to it to make it easier to build nice looking Freeform boards. There are going to be some new AI features in Photos like the ability to create really smart memories and also to edit objects out of Photos. Those aren't there yet. But what is there is the change where now at the top you see if you're in library you've got only years, months, and all photos. Days isn't there. Instead it's under collections. So the idea is that different ways to organize your photos are under collections and days kind of fit into that more than just the months and years. Apple's definitely doing more in photos now for people like me who don't want to spend time creating their own albums. They just want everything to be kind of automatically organized and easy to find. Now it's another feature that's not in this first beta but I know it's going to be my favorite feature so I wanted to include it in this list anyway. And that's going to be the ability to show your iPhone screen on your Mac. So you can have your iPhone put away. It could even be in your pocket and it could show your iPhone screen there. You don't have to pull your iPhone out to see what's going on to use different apps on your iPhone. And you could just have it on your Mac's screen instead of actually as a separate screen sitting on your desk. And it'll be great to be able to use the keyboard, trackpad, and mouse to be able to navigate on the iPhone screen and get things done. For people like me that sit at their Macs all day, it's going to be great to be able to access their iPhones like this, even be able to drag and drop things from apps on your Mac into the iPhone that's in a window on your Mac. There's one last thing I want to show you. You may notice the desktop background here is new for Sequoia and it kind of looks like you're looking up through Sequoia trees. Well, you can go into system settings here and you can go to either screensaver or wallpaper and find this right here. And this is kind of what it looks like when it's in screensaver mode. But in addition to that, there's this other one called Macintosh. This is kind of a look at retro Mac OS as your desktop background. Here's what it looks like. And it keeps shifting around between different apps and different parts of the original Mac interface. There's a look at the new features we have so far in macOS Sequoia. It's really early in development now. So we're obviously going to see a lot of these features deployed over the summer as we move towards the fall release and then maybe even some features that will be added after that. I'll do some videos that go into more detail on some of these and also of course updates as new features are added to these betas. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.